Hey guys, it's the Lex Man here with something quite different. A big grin on my face thinking about it because I used to have done this shit years ago. I think this idea's fucking awesome. So if you've been watching my channel, you're used to me making jokes like, well, now I'm gonna go play some dirty hentai games on Steam. Well, who would have thought? I actually own said games and I actually do fucking play them. I mean, look at this face. Does this look like the face of an upstanding member of society? No, this is the face of a dirty pervert who sits in his parents' attic jerking off all day. So, these are my personal favourites in Steam. Now, in case you don't know, Steam used to have a thing where porn wasn't allowed. Tits was about it. Anything else, no go. So what would happen... They'd release a game, censored, and then there'd be an unofficial patch released by someone, basically the developers under a different fucking name, and it would get leaked, and you would download the patch and it would remove all the censorship. So you buy the censored version, then uncensor it once you've, the money's went by. And it worked for a while, so now Steam decided to wake the fuck up and realise, well, huh, and allow everything on there the store, which includes uncensored full nudity kinky fucking hentai games. So, these are my top five in no particular order. <clears throat> so, the reason I'm picking these is, for me, what is an erotic kinky fucking game? One, it has to be fun. I mean, if it's not fun, I may as well just go on Pornhub or some shit, you know? So to me, I picked these games because not only do they have great artwork and great scenes, but the fact is, they're actually fun games. They're actually damn good games. So, yeah. So let's get started. I'm going. To, what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to show you the Steam page with the price, if available. Talk a little bit about the game and then move on to the next game. I would show footage and stuff, but a lot of these games I've already got uncensored. I don't want to have to, like, thingy them and then get the patch again because sometimes the patches get taken down. So I'm just going to show you the Steam page. And it also means that I won't get this video taken down for nudity or anything like that because I'm not fucking showing any. So anyway, let's get started. So the first game on my list is President Yukino. It's by Kagura Games as the publisher and Acerola as the developer. Now they've got uh, a few games. They also make two others on this list. Um, Machina and Treasure Hunter Clear. You can actually get them in a bundle for a discounted price. The heroin bundle I think it's called. Not the drug, although that would be awesome. But drug use is not fun guys. Stay away from drugs and watch fucking kinky games instead. But anyway, let's move on. Now this is the least favourite, but that doesn't mean it's a bad game. The premise of this game is basically you play as Yukino. Yukino wants to go to the same school as her boyfriend, but it's an expensive school, so she has to make the money to pay the tuition fee and put a little dent in it. So from what I worked out, you need to have, I think it's is it a million yen, one million yen by the end of the game, which I think is 60 days. So you basically wake up, you walk about, you do stuff. And there's various stats like shyness, suspicion, and at the end of each day you become a boyfriend. So you'll play as hard, you'll get a job at the cafe, the owner will do something like grope your ass and it'll say, oh, shyness minus two, suspicion plus two. The suspicion gets higher, the boyfriend starts to, you know, think she's cheating and other stuff. So as her day ends, you begin as a boyfriend. He can go to sleep or he can walk about the town. So you can't really do much as him at the start, you mainly just go to bed, but his real thing is he likes to look at perverted pictures. There's this online forum in the game that he goes on this PC and people post anonymous pictures. Getting a blowjob from my fucking stepsister or, you know, my husband's friend fucked me and the pictures of it and stuff. So what happens is occasionally if you do certain things as Yukino, um, as she becomes more perverted and actually willing to do more dirty stuff, she will occasionally show up on that website and his suspicion will go up. And as his suspicion goes up, you can walk about the town and witness her basically shagging other guys. And yeah, she does sexy stuff, she gets money for it. And you need to buy stuff like outfits, so you'll want to work at the maid cafe, you'll need the maid outfit. It costs 40,000 yen, so you need to work at a bar, or work at a cafe a couple of times, or somewhere, or a convenience store, to get the money to buy the outfit, then you can take the job. But you need to have a certain requirement. Your shyness needs to be a certain level, blah blah blah, it needs to be a certain day, you can do things like 
go on your webcam and fucking masturbate to people and get tips. You need to buy the webcam for 100,000 yen. You then need to see the advert, go to your room. and It's pretty, it's, it's not bad. Some people might not like it, but it can be kind of fun. But the only thing about it is... It's called an RPG, but the RPG elements are quite light compared to the other games in this video. But it's still quite a fun game, worth checking out. Kagura games are really good, the translation's good, there's no Google Translate. They didn't skimp out or anything like that. A lot of care went into this game, they didn't just go right, throw some fucking pictures together, translate it via Google Translate and sell that shit. They actually put some effort in, which is why I support the developers and I look forward to the future offerings. Now, on to my second one. The next game on my list is also by Kagura Games Acerola and this is Treasure Hunter Clear. Now this game is more of an RPG than the first one and I love RPGs so this game is right up my alley. You start off as Clear who's a treasure hunter at the guild and she's a money greedy son of a bitch. So there's tons, and I mean tons of quests in this game. You, There is a lot of content. It might be a bit expensive. You think, oh, for a quick wank, that's a bit pricey, but it's a really good game. There's lots of quests, lots of content. So you basically take a quest, and it will say, go to the forest, kill 10 goblins. You'll get money for it, um, stuff like that, or items for it. You'll go ahead and do that. And then you can buy various items, healing potions, etc. And you can buy various outfits, which gives you different buffs. Basically, if Claire is naked, she her, her stats will go up immensely. So if you want an easy time, be naked. But to be naked, her shyness needs to be at zero. So your shyness goes down via sex scenes, the more people she shags, the less shy she becomes. So that's basically it. If you can't be bothered with that, you can grind for some money and you can go buy certain things um, that will bring your shyness down. There's also a dom and a sub meter which will result in different scenes. So let's say you lose to an enemy and your dom and sub are both equal. You'll just get the normal version of her being shagged by the enemy. But if she's dominant, the text will change. She'll say stuff like, oh, is that all you've got and stuff? But if she's sub and she does that scene, she'll be like, oh, I'm your little slut and all that sort of stuff. And it's interesting to see the differences and changes depending on her stats. And the stats can be manipulated with items and stuff, so you don't have to grind a lot if you really want to change them. Money is probably the only main grind in this game, but it can be pretty tough because for certain quests you will need to have certain people in your party, which then means that you need to take them along. You can only have three party members, so you need to make sure they're all equally leveled because you can get absolutely fucking wrecked in this game. It's not ridiculously grindy. Um, if you use the right strategy and stuff, you just need to sort of watch out for that. And there is a lot of quests. Do all the quests, unlock all the scenes. And like President Yukino, um, I'm not sure if I mentioned that and just there, but at the end of all these games, when you complete them, there's basically new glitch. You can basically start fresh or do New Game Plus. And New Game Plus lets you do stuff like, in some games, keep all your money or keep all your levels. So you can do a New Game Plus, be back at the start, but you're level 50 and you've got all your good equipment. So the game's a fucking breeze. But there's also a teddy bear in this Andrew Kino that when you activate it, it will unlock all the filthy hentai scenes. So if you haven't got a couple and you're not sure how to get them, or you just can't be fucking bothered, you go to the teddy bear, you click unlock all the scenes and it will unlock. You can then go back to the title, go to the gallery and enjoy the scenes at your will. And not only that, they're both really fun games. I actually really enjoyed this game. I love the artwork. I love the music, especially the forest. The forest area has some amazing music. Boss fights were pretty good, but some of the quests were a little bit of a pain in the ass. Other than that, pretty good game. Let's move on. The next game on my list is by the same developer and publisher, and this one is called Fallen Machina and the City of Ruins. This one came out quite a few months earlier than the other two, which were released about a month apart. This one is a no-nonsense a no RPG dungeon crawler. There isn't, there is obviously a story, but a lot of the po points in this game, you will basically be in the ruins. And I think there's a hundred floors, I think. I have not completed this game yet, for the record. 
but I, I've played a fair amount of it to really talk about it. So, like the other games, it's an RPG, you have to go around. Now, the only thing I don't like about this, right off the start, is in Treasure Hunter Clear, you have a quest log. And the quest log tells you all you need to know. Go speak to this person, go do that. So once you spoke to that person, it will say to you, go back to the guild. And you go back to the guild, speak to them, they say, hey, well done, here's 5,000 gold, couple of potions, cool, you want another quest? This game does not do that, you have to memorise it. So if you speak to someone, they say, yeah, go speak to the guy at the bottom of town. You need to remember that they told you to go speak to that guy at the bottom of town or speak to this guy in this particular level of the ruins or, or something and it can if you don't remember, remember it and it can be a pain in the ass but to be fair this game doesn't throw a lot at you unlike treasure hunter clear it doesn't just throw 20 quests at you and say you get on with it so it doesn't really need a quest log you just need to pay attention and not forget what your fucking goal is so you level up and this is a hard game i found this game to be a little bit harder and it's, it's not really hard because you have plenty of magic and stuff you can heal yourself up items aren't ridiculously expensive you may have to grind a little bit for cash but leveling up can be a bit of a grind however there is a fix for this uh, in the first dungeon on the first floor there is a shop a level shop so for 50 gold the level shop will upgrade you by one level so if you're having trouble and you've or you're not enjoying the grind you go there you buy 10 or 15 levels and that's you sorted personally for me i didn't do that um i bought about five levels at the start and then five more levels mid game just to give me a little bit of a boost where the battles weren't going quite as long but there is a speed up button in this game to speed up the battles so there's various situations like the usual thing you'll fight someone this one doesn't really have lose scenes like when you lose to an enemy in this game it's just game over. This is also RPG Maker this is made in. The other ones were made in Wolf RPG, I believe. So you can kind of notice this game's a little different because it's made in RPG Maker MV. So there's no lose scenes. You lose to an enemy, it's game over, you need to reload. Um, there's also not a traditional gallery. You have to go to a part in the ruins, click, they'll have different um, like plaques. You go up to it and it'll say the name of the scene and you can replay it if you want. Whereas in the Wolf RPG games there's a gallery on the title screen. Um, so you go through this, you'll do stuff like you'll beat a guy or some situation will happen where she has to suck some, like there's a one where you have to get into this underground city and the guy won't let you in without the password so you give him a fucking blowjob and he lets you in. Stuff like that and it shows you the pictures and again make sure to uninstall the uncensored patch Kagura Games have all the patches for these games on the website, so you buy it on Steam, go to their website, download the patch, enjoy the images. This game in particular doesn't have censored images, it just will not show you the scenes. It will just say, he'll say, hey, if you want in, you need to suck my dick, and she'll be like, oh, okay, get on with it. The screen will go black, it will come back, and that'll be it. You won't see the scene, it'll just be presume that you saw him suck it so but even if you don't have it uncensored it will still unlock the scene so when you do get the uncensored patch all the scenes that you have unlocked that didn't see can be viewed again if that makes sense overall great game but a little bit difficult you may need to grind a little bit great graphics great gameplay great great music even though a lot of it's just stock rpg maker stuff but still a good game regardless worth checking out the next game in my list is one of my absolute favourites, it's called Melty's Quest and it's quite expensive, I think it's around 20 quid, so that's quite pricey, but it's a really, really good game, I highly recommend it. Publisher, RemTV, Happy Life is a developer, well both of them are, but basically a Japanese team, from what I know it's a Japanese team who then have an American team helping with the translations and that's one of the reasons this is so good. Um, is the translation's fantastic. You, the, it's, you would think it was made by an English speaking team. There's no machine translation, no crap like that, no um, Google Translate sort of stuff. It's really fluent and there's, there's no um, English or any of that crap. It's great. Graphics are great, the music is great but again standard stock RPG maker stuff. But the reason I like this game is it has crafting elements. You can craft outfits and stuff like that. You need to craft to progress in the game, like there's a segment where you have to go to a bridge and it's broken, you need to get through the bridge to go to the next area. You'll go there and um, 
that you'll go to the carpenter and he'll say, hey, fix that, I need uh, 10 wood, 10 stone, 50 iron, and you find these lying about the various dungeons. All you need to do is walk over them to pick them up, and all these games I should mention, including the ones I've mentioned, none of these games have random encounters. You can see the enemies walking around, so you can avoid battles easily, just don't get seen by the enemy. Um, Melty's quest is quite cool because when you get when you lose to an enemy, um, it has a give up button. In fact, so does Treasure Hunter Clay, it has a self destruct. If you just want to see the nudity scenes, you can give up and it'll instantly, you'll lose and she'll get fucked and you get to see the scene and then you can go fight the enemy again. It's quite useful if you just want to, like if you've levered up quite a bit and you don't want to sit there taking 30, 40 hits for 10 minutes, then yeah, uh, pretty cool. The Also, when you've already seen a scene, it won't show the full scene over and over again. It'll just say, Melty's got fucked by a bunch of goblins. It won't play the whole scene. Uh, and it also has a gallery at the very start that you can go and see. So you go through there, you fight the bosses. It's actually, story's actually pretty interesting, quite cool. You go there, upgrade your equipment, do all the side quests, speak to all the people, fight the enemies, and if you lose, you see a sex scene. Pretty simple stuff, but a really great game. Released last year, around this same time. Well, actually, almost exactly a year ago, 24th of October. Great game. Really, really fun game. Um, but again, requires an uncensored patch, so get your hands on that. Um, and it's just fantastic. I know it's expensive, but I just absolutely loved it. I just I thought it was such a fun game. The battles, everything was fun. It was great. I absolutely loved it. So I highly recommend you check this one out. This is one of my absolute favourites. I've recommended it to many filthy perverted fuckers like myself. And I think you're going to enjoy it. On to the next one. Now the fifth and final game in my list is Sakura Dungeon. Now I've seen the Sakura games floating around for ages. But I just never bothered with them. And the main reason is... They're fucking visual novels, and I, I cannot stand visual novels, they just bore me to pieces. I find them really boring, I'm more of an action RPG guy, like the rest of the games on this fucking list. And they're quite expensive, and there's tons of them, I think there's like 20 of these fucking games. So I saw them, I think it was Humble Bundle, either Humble Bundle or Indie Gala. I saw them and I bought the bundle. And the only one I really gave a shit about was Sakura Dungeon, because I love dungeon crawlers. And this game in particular reminds me of a game called Dungeon Master. It was an old game released, I think it was on the Apple II and Do Windows Microsoft DOS um, years and years ago, like um, early to mid 90s. And there's a few similar games on Steam, but none of them are quite the same. And Sakura Dungeon gave me exactly what I wanted. It's um, Hardcore dungeon crawler, no fucking around, but with a JRPG twist, and, and it's got modern conveniences that the older games didn't have, stuff like that. Plus it's got fucking porn, so there's that as well. So I got the uncensored patch, started playing the game, and yeah, it's it, taking away from the fact that it's a erotic game, it's a damn good RPG 3D dungeon crawler. There is no nonsense going on here, guys. You start off with a mini-map, you go to your dungeon with fuck all shit equipment, the usual. You will have your mini-map, and it'll be blank, it'll just have the square that you're on, or maybe two squares ahead, and it will fill up as you proceed through the dungeon. You'll find things like save points. Once you've found the save point, you can go to the surface. You can either save your game, or go to the surface, go to the shop, sell off your loot, buy new equipment, buy more potions, blah blah blah. And what you can do in this game is capture monsters. So, you'll fight various monster givers, and if you capture them, they'll then be on your team and you can level them up and stuff like that. So it's really cool because I love dungeon crawlers, I love just non-stop hours and hours and maze-like dungeons, but the fact you've got the mini-map there, you never get lost, you're never wondering where to go next. But um, you're also, it's, not also, it's also not too grindy. Um, there's all, it's not too grindy and there's not a lot of bullshit. Um, there's none of this, oh no, a random a random floor trap opened up and sent you to your doom. Game over. None of that shit, guys. This game is pretty damn fair. Lots of fun. Great music, great graphics, great gameplay, and a damn good RPG. I highly recommend it. Um, if you're not interested in the sexy parts at all, I would buy it anyway. Just leave it censored. And just play it purely for the gameplay because this is a great 3D dungeon crawler. It's got that old school 
um, dungeon master vibe, but with modern conveniences, easy to access save points, better controls, more fluid battle combat and stuff. Highly recommend it. Definitely check it out. So that's my top five favorite erotic fucking kinky perverted games on Steam. Yeah, I totally needed a GTX 1070 and an Intel i7 to run these beasts. So yeah, guys, I hope you guys liked them. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. I thought it would be quite amusing, something different. I've also got something planned for Halloween. I'm hoping I have the energy and the will to actually do it because it's a pretty awesome idea. I think everyone's going to really like it. I've never really done it before. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that fucking bell icon so you can see when I do my next top five erotic games and you can fap to your heart's content. So, it's a Friday night. You get the whole weekend ahead of you. Go buy some of these games, <clears throat> install them, get the patches to uncensor them, and you fucking fap away. But just you remember, when you fucking come and a hot white mess explodes over your stomach and you're like, oh, that was amazing. You just remember the Lex Man. The Lex Man turned you onto that. The Lex Man helped you discover a new fetish. Your your social status might be down, but that erection of yours is always gonna be up. <laughs> Catch you next time.